You know, a lot of times when I turn on my computer and I watch some of these YouTube videos where you can see people protesting Scientology, I get a little disappointed seeing the approach they use because I don't think a lot of the protesters have a clue on the right way to attack a Scientologist belief system. And I'll, I'll explain why that is. Um, number one, if you're going to go up to a Scientologist and start talking about Xenu, they're not necessarily going to know what you're talking about. When I, when I was in Scientology, working on staff even, I never heard about this character Xenu. This is, this is a Scientology scripture that's reserved for the upper-level Scientologists that have either been there many years or paid a lot of money and learned about the Xenu character. But again, if you'd have come up to me and said, well, you know, well, how's it going with the space aliens? I'd look at you like you're nuts, like you didn't really understand Scientology. The version I was taught of Scientology and sounded rather scientific. It involved the use of the E-meter, and, uh, you know, they had, they had our uh, map to freedom, you know, totally mapped out on what they call the bridge to total freedom. And, it, you know, it sounded very scientific in the initial stages. It didn't sound, it wasn't really, um, the religious aspect of it wasn't really pushed, um, but at least not in the initial stages. It was more talk about removing engrams with the E-meter and the whole bit. And uh, I was looking for a picture of the E-meter here so I could show you. I'm sure most of you know what the E-meter is by now, so if I can't find it, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. But, uh, well, there's the E-meter. Yeah, this this auditing process was what really intrigued me. You know, I thought that these trained counselors, when this E-meter was some this somehow this advanced uh, uh, method of healing people of, you know, past traumas and that was what was going to make me whole so if if what uh, let me think what was I going to say oh yeah you know the thing the thing that I needed to really wake up finally about Scientology was I just needed time to observe what was going on and I've told some of the stories in my other videos of things I saw while working in Scientology and uh, you know one of the things that really bothered me was when a lady friend that I worked on staff with who received a bunch of auditing said that she's now able to leave her body at will. And I remember asking her to do a demonstration of her so-called ability to me, and she tried by turning around and trying to tell me how many fingers I was holding up. And after three attempts, we both discovered that she couldn't do it. And that was a, a big, a big awakening for me. Um, I also remember a young man coming in our church who, whose father gave our mission a lot of money to help his son because I guess he thought that we were somehow psychologists or something of that nature, or psychiatrist. <laughs> uh, and uh, anyway, his son didn't get any better. He was still talking crazy when, when uh, he left Scientology. He was talking about suicide. You know, I don't know how serious he was there, but I remember I used to I used to be interested in watching his progress because here was this guy that actually had money to pay for Scientology counseling, which most of us working on staff didn't. That's why we worked on staff. We wanted to reach the upper levels through training and becoming counselors ourselves. But uh, here was this guy that, you know, his dad gave him a bunch of money or gave our mission a bunch of money to help him. So I'd go up to him all the time and I'd ask him how he's doing. Well, I discovered that he wasn't getting any better. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, you know, well, how do, oh, let me backtrack a little, I'm sorry, I'm kind of jumping around here. Um, you got to understand, first of all, that the Scientology people were sold a bill of goods that sounded pretty good on the surface. And you got to know how to approach, how to attack that. What I would do if I was in front of a Scientology mission is I would, I'd go up to a Scientologist and I'd say, well, you know, how do you know that what you believe is correct? With all the different religions out there, how do you know that your, your religion is right? Well, they might say, well, you know, I've seen people come in here and get better. i say, better in what way? Well, you know, people come in here that had drug problems or whatever, and they're not using drugs anymore, they're happier. And, and so at, at that point, I'd want to know, well, they're happier, okay, because they have hope that Scientology is going to make them better. That, that in itself, just having hope, made me happier when I was in Scientology because I thought they had all the answers and you know it was just a matter of time before I was going to reach a, a state of happiness 
And so, you know, that was one aspect of why Scientology gave me a sense of well-being, is that I thought I was on a path to, um, I guess you could say, freedom. The bridge to total freedom. And uh, the other thing, I was socializing a lot when I was in Scientology. Sure, I was socializing with other Scientologists, and they may have been nutty as fruitcakes as far as their philosophy goes, but I was socializing, and that was that was a positive thing, you know. Um, so that in itself, you know, gave me a sense of well-being. And did, as far as Scientology's auditing, I had, uh, oh, I don't know, 60... 60 something hours of it. I can't tell that it changed me in any way. I thought some of the processes I went through were, were kind of ridiculous. And, you know, I remember some of the weird things I was asked to do. Uh, my auditor would hold a book up and he'd have me, he'd move the book in certain directions like this, up, down, sideways, and he'd say, all right, you know, I want you to, to, uh, you know, duplicate all the motions I make. And I don't know, it seemed like we were there for a couple hours, and he's just going up, down, sideways with the book. And I'm, then I'm supposed to book the, pick the book up and do the same thing. And uh, maybe it's designed to get you out of your head or something. I don't quite know. But anyway, no no great magic yeah, there. But, you know, uh, a lot of us are very suggestible, and I'll, I'll include myself there, too. And I'll, I'll tell you a little story about a friend of mine that came in my shop not that long ago. He had this metal pen that looked something like a normal pen, only it was really a, what he called was a healing device of some sort. They called it the Omega Wand. And what he told me about it was that it had the ability to heal people. And I said, well, you know, how does that work? He says, well, you got any pain on your body? And I said, yeah, uh, my back kind of bothers me. So he takes this metal pen and he starts moving it around like this, going up and down. And I'm looking at him, I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, what, what in the world? Do you really think this is going to heal me? So after he does this for a while, he says, how do you feel? And I said, well, I don't feel any different. And he says, well, I want to leave it with you. And I, you to try it on yourself, you know, just to see the benefits. It'll just take a while. You need to do it more. So I, I really didn't believe in it. But I thought, you know what, just, just to argue with him some more, I'm going to do it and then let him know it didn't do anything for me. And so, anyway, now in Scientology, they would probably believe that if you believe it would work, that it would work, because that's how Scientology people thought, is that you can, you can decide something will work and it'll work, you know, because your own mind will make it work or whatever. But anyway, um, it didn't do anything for me. And so I remember later, uh, a lady friend of mine came by and I pulled out a, I happened to have a digital thermometer in my shop. And uh, it had a cap on it, so you couldn't tell what it was. And I asked her, I said, hey, i, I got to show you something here. I, do you have any pains on your body? And she says, well, my arm kind of hurts me a little bit. And I said, let me show you something. I took the pen, and I started moving it around like this and doing the same thing my friend did over her arm. And I said, well, how do you feel now? And she says, you know what, it feels a little better. At that point, I pulled the cap off the device so she could see what it was. I showed her a digital thermometer, and she laughed at herself because she knew she was kind of suggestible. I believe that's kind of how Scientology works. I'm not an expert in hypnosis, but I've seen enough demonstrations to know that's another factor. You know, a lot of people can be hypnotized. And, uh, you know, you believe something strong enough, of course it's going to give you a sense of well-being. And maybe you can be hypnotized in the idea that you're getting better or... or uh, you know that gee after all all these celebrities are in Scientology so it must be must be the real deal right John Travolta is a you know successful celebrity so it must be that Scientology's got it all figured out and look and all these other uh, celebrities are in Scientology what what people don't realize is the Scientology people work so hard to get these people into Scientology they set up courses that would appeal to their uh, their career aspirations, you know, because uh, they know that once they get a Scientology member in, that, uh, I'm sorry, a celebrity in, that it's going to be good, good PR. By the way, speaking of celebrities, here's a picture of Tori Magoo, a woman who speaks against Scientology now. Now, she was OT8. So if, if Tori could reach the uh, upper levels, you know, and now speaks against it, uh, how could that happen, right? Scientology's got all the answers. 
And how could this woman, who Scientology used in their book here to promote it, later speak against it? She's at the upper levels of awareness. She would know what the truth is, and she would, you know, be so far beyond aberration. If Scientology was a good thing, she certainly wouldn't speak against it, right? Um, anyway, there's Tori. In case you're watching, hello, Tori. Um, enjoy your videos. So, anyway, I just thought I'd ramble a little bit here. Hope you find my rambling somewhat entertaining. Thanks for listening.